let us now look at the asymptote of the Higonio. So, we could show that uh, the asymptotes so the way we actually try to find out the asymptotes of this Hugonio curve is uh, to, to substitute that uh, 1 over rho infinity goes to infinity and then find out what is the value of p infinity for 1 over rho infinity going to infinity uh, to, to get this asymptote. Uh, for you to get this asymptote you now substitute p infinity is, is equal to infinity in the Hugonio relation. Uh, and then try to find out what is the value of 1 over rho infinity right. So um, can be shown to be that means uh, you show uh, you show as in like you can do this as an exercise and it can be like a typical uh, quiz question or an exam problem. Uh, 1 over rho infinity equals 1 over uh, rho naught times gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 and uh, p infinity equals minus p naught minus p naught gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1. Now uh, no, notice that gamma is the ratio of specific heats which is greater than 1. So let us suppose it is about 1.25 or something like that. So this is going to be like point something divided by 2 point something. So uh, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 is going to be always less than 1 and so 1 over rho infinity is always going to be less than 1 over rho naught and therefore your asymptote is going to be to the left of the origin. And similarly uh, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 again is less than 1 and it is going to be a fraction of p naught that means it is going to be less than uh, less than the less than the value of value at the origin but with a negative sign right. So it is now going to the other side and obviously that is not possible right. So, uh, so this is less than 0 uh, not possible not physically possible right. So, so the, the practical range of p infinity is uh, 0 less than p infinity less than infinity it can go up to infinity um, that is possible. So where, what is the range of uh, rho infinity that is now going to span between where the uh, Hugonio in intersects so let us suppose that is how it is intersecting uh, so that, that goes asymptotically to the low, lower bound there which is which is impossible but p infinity equal to 0 is about where you can go down go up to 1 over rho infinity you cannot go below this because p infinity cannot become negative right. Therefore this is like your uppermost value of 1 over rho infinity. So you can try to find that out by plugging in p infinity equal to 0 in the rankine hugonio relation right and then try to solve for 1 over rho infinity and get an expression. The lowest value is when p infinity becomes infinity. So that is corresponding to this particular value itself the, the of the asymptote right. So the, the range of uh, range of 1 over rho infinity is uh, 1 over rho naught gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 which is what we have for the asymptote we saw just a little earlier and you are not going to really touch it because it is an asymptote and therefore you are not going to really touch p infinity equals infinity so you are always less than that and so 1 over rho infinity is always greater than this not really greater than or equal to but you can go up to greater than or equal to um, what is now called 2q divided by p naught plus um, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 I am sorry this is gamma plus 1 divided by 
gamma minus 1 1 over rho naught now uh, notice that this is actually dependent on q that means if your q is larger the Hugonio shifts to the right and above and uh, uh, top and therefore the point it, point where it intersects the um, p infinity equal to 0 axis shifts further and further out right so sure enough as you increase your q this term is going to linearly increase right so this is this is a range now what we also noticed was uh, notice that uh, the first quadrant of the Hugonio plot is uh, is not possible because uh, because uh, the Rayleigh line has a negative slope so this divides the Hugonio into two parts the upper branch and the lower branch so you can now begin to see what those limits are for these each branch each of these branches so uh, the Hugonio curve is uh, divided into two branches uh, the, the, the lower and the upper right so um, along the upper branch along the upper branch the uh, ranges the ranges are the ranges are p naught p naught plus uh, gamma minus 1 q rho naught less than or equal to p infinity less than infinity that is going from here that is going from here all the way up to infinity right so what, what we are actually locating this is p naught plus gamma minus 1 q rho naught so as q increases as q increases this curve is going to go up so the point where th this intersection happens is going to go up right so p infinity then the lowest value of p infinity will keep moving up as q increases. Um, so this can obviously be uh, obtained by plugging in 1 over rho infinity is equal to 1 over rho naught in your uh, uh, rankin hugonio relation right. So each of these expressions can actually be derived by plugging different things in the rankin hugonio relation okay. The question is for what do you need to plug what is something that you have to think about and use your mind and you can get these expressions but these are like little problems that you can face in. Uh, in your exams okay. this is like a fertile ground for asking lots of little questions right. um, just to just to basically test your algebraic skills uh, not not really combustion skills um, okay and then uh, this this is as far as the p infinity is concerned and uh, of course the lowest value of uh, uh, rho naught that you can uh, rho infinity I'm sorry one over rho infinity that you can get is uh, the asymptote and the highest value is 1 over rho naught itself that is very easy for you to figure out right. So uh, again we can, we can write 1 over rho naught uh, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma plus 1 less than 1 over rho infinity less than or equal to 1 over uh, rho naught that is the range for the one over rho infinity along the upper branch along the lower branch the ranges are the ranges are 
um, again if you are now looking at P infinity uh, it is going to go from uh, here that is the, the highest value is P naught and the uh, lowest value is uh, this right which is 0 therefore uh, uh, so you, you it is going to go from 0 less than or equal to P infinity less than or equal to uh, P naught okay and uh, the uh, you now look at the lower branch it starts from here so the lowest value of 1 over rho infinity is corresponding to this value which is uh, which is obtained by plugging P infinity equal to P naught right so if you now plug P infinity equal to P naught in the Rankine Ugonio relation you should now get an expression that we should now be able to see readily depends on Q linearly so 1 over rho naught plus mm, gamma minus 1 divided by gamma Q divided by P naught um, less than or equal to 1 over rho infinity less than or equal to that is the other end where the P infinity becomes 0 this is something that we have already figured out that is this value right so that is uh, 2Q divided by P naught plus 1 over rho naught gamma plus 1 divided by gamma minus 1 good so these are uh, these are just algebraic expressions that you can get for the different limits for the upper branch and the lower branch separately um, okay now uh, as, as we noticed we can clearly see from here that the upper branch corresponds to a uh, compression wave that actually decelerates the flow and uh, therefore we call it a detonation wave the lower branch is a uh, expansion wave which accelerates the flow and uh, so we, we call it a deflagration wave okay uh, these are things that we, we noticed. The next thing that we wanted to point out was uh, mm, we wanted to actually find out what is the speed at which the uh, detonation waves travel and what is the speed at which the deflagration waves travel. So the way we wanted to actually look at it is what is the speed at speed of the lowest uh, the sl slowest detonation wave and what is the speed of the fastest deflagration wave and obviously we can see that they are sort of uh, poles apart okay so that is the, 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 the slowest detonation wave is still going to be much faster than the fastest deflagration wave so let us see what, what they, what they uh, tell us okay and these, these are corresponding to the Chapman Juge uh, de, detonation and the uh, deflagration waves. So what we want to actually look, look for is uh, what is the incoming Mach number incoming Mach number at the CJ points at the CJ points on both branches. All right. So this is what we should be looking at now. Um, so how do you how do you locate the the two the two CJ points, right? Obviously, you look at um, any point any point that is like a solution of both intersection of the Rayleigh line and the Hugo Neo is by solving them together, right? So the Rayleigh line has its p infinity and rho, one over rho infinity showing up and the Hugonio curve has its 1 over p infinity and 1 over rho infinity showing up so that is to say that uh, uh, if you now solve for p infinity and 1 over rho, rho infinity together with these two equations you now should get a pair of p infinity and 1 over rho infinity that corresponds to coordinates that satisfy both the equations and that means that that is a point where both of them intersect right but in addition to that at the CJ points we also have to match the slopes because the Rayleigh line is tangential to the, uh, the to the Hugonio curve right so uh, so let us first uh, try to get the end states at the CJ points end states as in the infinity conditions right 
So at the CJ points the slopes of uh, the Rayleigh line and the Hugonio curve match. So that means we have to first of all find out what is the slope at any point on the uh, Hugonio curve and then match it to the slope of the Rayleigh line uh, so that the slope of uh, the Hugonio curve is dp infinity d over d1 over rho infinity this is something that you can actually obtain by simply differentiating the uh, Hugonio curve uh, with respect to 1 over rho infinity right so wherever you are getting a uh, p infinity you try to now differentiate that with respect to 1 over rho infinity right um, so then you get a p infinity minus p naught times sorry minus 2 gamma over gamma minus 1 times p infinity divided by 2 gamma divided by gamma minus 1 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught plus 1 over rho infinity that is the slope expression that you get for any point on the Hugonio curve this is actually the slope at any point okay we are still not saying that uh, this is at the at, at the CJ points at the CJ points it turns out that the slope should now be equal to the Rayleigh slope right so uh, slope of the Rayleigh line what is the slope of the Rayleigh line the Rayleigh line is a straight line okay and so long as we do not want to use the m dot squared expression that is like a no no yeah because we want to deal with only the thermodynamic properties so for a straight line it is just p infinity minus p naught divided by 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught that is it right so is uh, um, p infinity minus p naught divided by 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught so equating the two equating the two we can uh, we can we can get uh, so we can get like a for example p infinity p infinity equal to p naught rho naught divided by rho infinity times gamma plus 1 rho naught divided by rho infinity minus gamma so here what we have done is we have eliminated or, or we, have, we have now written an expression for p infinity in terms of the other three p naught rho naught and rho infinity okay in fact we always should be looking for rho infinity to show up as 1 over rho infinity so sure enough this is 1 over rho infinity here this is 1 over rho infinity here and we are also getting it as rho naught over rho infinity everywhere right here as well as here okay so essentially that means we should now be in a position to eliminate p infinity in favor of rho infinity or rather 1 over rho infinity or if you want to do it the other way you can now try to get, get an expression for 1 over rho infinity in terms of p infinity p naught and uh, 1 over rho naught okay so or or 1 over rho infinity equal to 1 over rho naught times gamma p infinity divided by p naught times 1 plus gamma or, or rather you used to writing gamma plus 1 p infinity divided by p naught minus 1 okay so you can use either of these expressions so these are both at cj points 
both is, both these expressions are valid at CJ points. Okay, doesn't really solve much. We are we are not really got the coordinates yet, because here p infinity depends on rho infinity. So what is it meant by saying getting the coordinates? We should now be able to write p infinity only as a function of p naught, rho naught, and q. Okay, and one over rho infinity we should be able to write in terms of p naught, one over rho naught, and q. But this is a mixed thing. We just can eliminate because we can be in, or we can write explicit expressions for p naught at the c p infinity at the cj point and one over rho infinity at the cj point in terms of the others, which will still contain the other infinity term p infinity will contain 1 over rho infinity term and p 1 over rho infinity will contain p infinity okay so there are there are these other things so we still haven't solved the solve solve for the coordinates which is which is what we are now going to do next so substitute either of these right in the Hugonio or should strictly speaking say Rankine Hugonio to give Rankine his due relation so that what happens is if you now write p infinity in terms of 1 over rho infinity in the Rankine Hugonio you do not have p infinity at all in that expression you will now have an expression that is only on 1 over rho infinity which you which means you can now write what is 1 over rho infinity in terms of everything else right. So to so but, but unfortunately you are now going to get a quadratic okay in either of these but, but it is actually fortunate if, if physically fortunate mathematically a bit unfortunate you have to deal with quadratic equation but it is physically fortunate because this says only cj matching the slope simply means that we are, we are, we are just working at any cj point it could be the upper cj point or the lower cj point either of these cj points the, the, the Rayleigh really line is tangential to the Hugonio it is not distinguishing between those, those two right and we, we are therefore looking for two solutions to 1 over rho infinity and p infinity at the cj points one of which will correspond to the upper cj the other one corresponding to the lower cj point so here um, so substitute either of these expressions uh, in the in the in the Rankine Hugonio relation uh, to get get a quadratic quadratic in either p infinity or 1 over rho infinity and solve solve the quadratic so if you now solve the quadratic you get p infinity um, plus or minus equal to p naught plus gamma minus 1 q rho naught times 1 plus or minus um, 1 plus 2 gamma p naught divided by q rho naught gamma squared minus 1 the whole to the half okay now let us call this small a the expression for p infinity plus or minus 1 and 1 over rho infinity plus or minus equal to 1 over rho naught plus gamma minus 1 divided by gamma q divided by p naught times 1 minus or plus 1 plus 2 gamma p naught divided by q rho naught gamma squared minus 1 so that is kind of like the same as what we had before to the half okay so here what happens is when you now say plus or minus this plus goes with the plus here this minus goes with the minus here right but here this plus or minus is such that this plus goes with the minus there and this minus goes with the plus here right so 
when you say, so basically say plus or minus you simply mean upper CJ or lower CJ that means we are expecting that for the upper CJ your P infinity should always be greater than P naught therefore P infinity plus will correspond to P naught plus this okay lower CJ is going to be having a P infinity less than P naught therefore P infinity minus should be equal to P naught plus this minus with the negative sign that means you are going to have a less than and similarly here 1 over rho infinity you are not going to have 1 over rho infinity that is for the for the for the upper CJ you need to have a 1 over rho infinity that is less right therefore you need to have a negative sign over there and and for the deflagration CJ point the low LCJ point 1 over rho infinity is greater therefore you need to have a plus. So the lower sign will always correspond to a LCJ upper upper sign corresponds to a UCJ right. So upper sign corresponds to UCJ lower sign corresponds to LCJ. So we now got the coordinates great so uh, of course we need to call this B right good I mean the in, in fact getting getting the, this with this particular thing you know substitute those two expressions in the Hugonio curve expression the Rankine Hugonio relation and get the quadratic and solve the quadratic to get these this is actually done for each of those separately right you will sweat a little bit it is going to take like some amount of time doing all this stuff okay um, but it could be a bit boring but um, you, you wait through uh, the, the mathematics to see how the terms basically get grouped the way they are okay and then it is going to be pretty instructive for us because of what we are going to do next. Now what we want to do is uh, what, do, what do we want to do? what we want to do we want to now look at what is the incoming Mach number why do you want to look at the incoming Mach number because we want to know um, how fast the CJ detonation wave and the CJ deflagration wave are going to travel right now keep in mind how fast as the wave going to travel is an information that is contained in U naught okay because in a wave fixed coordinate system you are going to have the reactants travel to the wave at that speed and that information is now in our scheme of things embedded in M dot because M dot is the one that is containing rho naught U naught as well as rho infinity U infinity. So it serves purposes of take carrying the flow information on either side of the wave right and since we are actually looking at the incoming Mach number we should be focusing on U naught that means we are looking at M dot through which we will try to look for rho naught U naught and M dot does not show up in the Hugonio curve it is showing up only in the Rayleigh line right. So we should now go back to the Rayleigh line and say it is sort of like saying look at what we, what we have done we have substituted the slope matched information into the Hugonio curve to get this but can I now look at how the Rayleigh line is going to be like if I plug these coordinate points in the Rayleigh line and then get an M dot information through that you see what I am saying okay so in the, we have really not used the Rayleigh line information except to note that that is the slope but that is just a thermodynamic uh, that is just the slope written in terms of thermodynamic variables we have not brought in the fact that this is equal to minus m dot square right so that is what we want to do now. So we want to now notice that the slope that we had that we had used for the Rayleigh line is actually equal to minus m dot square and then get to the flow information. So using a and B 
in the in okay so simply just go back and write what it is p infinity minus p naught divided by 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho dot equals minus m dot squared right we can now get our m dot square divided by p naught rho naught plus or minus equal to gamma plus q rho naught divided by p naught times gamma squared minus 1 times 1 plus or minus 2 gamma p naught divided by q rho naught gamma squared minus 1 the whole to the half okay note that note that m dot equals rho naught u naught and the Mach number m naught is going to be written as u naught divided by a naught which is nothing but u naught divided by square root of gamma p naught divided by rho naught. If you now notice that m dot is nothing but rho naught u naught so now, now, now you write your u naught as m dot divided by rho naught okay. Uh, so you now plug that over here you will now get your uh, this is nothing but square root of m dot square divided by gamma p naught rho naught. So we had m dot square by p naught rho naught all right okay and then we now are looking for m dot square by gamma p naught rho naught under square root is your Mach number or m naught squared is now going to be m dot squared divided by gamma p naught rho naught that is I mean this is something that is basic it is nothing particular particular about whatever we are doing it is like just putting these, these things together right. So from here we should now be able to write m naught plus or minus as 1 plus q rho naught divided by p naught gamma squared minus 1 divided by 2 gamma the whole to the half plus or minus q rho naught divided by p naught gamma squared minus 1 by 2 gamma the whole to the half. So it is sort of like falling into some, some sort of a pattern there and uh, this is what we were looking for so because it is going to say something to us so at the CJ points okay. So what we can see from here is. when q goes to 0 right so when q goes to 0 this goes to 0 this goes to 0 right so you just get m0 plus or minus 1 is equal to 1 all right. So when q goes to 0 we get m0 plus or minus 1 equal to 1 we can say goes to 1. right and we will also see that uh, m infinity plus or minus 1 at cj points equal to 1 we will, we'll, that's that's something that we will do next okay so what's it, the what that simply means is nothing is happening when you don't have any heat release it is as if like you had a wave that is going at the sonic speed okay and not really changing anything about 
your your gases the gases are basically non reactive gases that means you don't you're not having any heat release and uh, that is as if like you had gases go at sonic speed and nothing happened to it okay that is not that is not a very interesting situation for us. But let us now look at the other possibility what we are really interested in is when you have non zero Q now how would you actually look for a non zero Q in the Rayleigh line as I said when you now have a a Q greater than 0 as Q increases you now have this Rayleigh line push up like that away and away from the origin of the Hugonium right and as you now go up to Q turning to infinity let us say you now had Q going to infinity right this curve is going to actually go and hit the Rayleigh line the, 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 this CJ point is go get pushed to infinity and this CJ point is going to get pushed to infinity here. All right, and what you're going to what you're going to now see is either your one over rho your p infinity is going to go to infinity, or your one over rho infinity is going to go to infinity. The p naught is going to go to zero over here. Your one over rho your p infinity is going to go to zero here, and your one over rho infinity is going to go to the uh, asymptote. This is this is how it's going to push, right? So if you now look at the limit, then so as we strictly speaking do not have to look at Q going to infinity itself what really matters for us is in this expression Q rho naught divided by P naught goes to infinity then if you now use the positive sign for the UCJ that is a detonation wave then both these terms add up together towards each other and then the then M, M naught plus goes to infinity right so uh, m not plus goes to infinity but m not minus goes to a zero the, these two terms essentially uh, subtract from each other of course one is like a small number when compared to these infinities that we are talking about so m not minus goes to zero right so what this means is uh, what you are then saying is then the the for the for the um, Chapman Juge detonation wave detonation wave keep in mind when Q is equal to 0 M not plus or minus both of them are going to be equal to 1 that is a lower limit as far as the heat is concerned right. So for the Chapman Juge detonation wave we, we have M not plus go from one to infinity, right? And for uh, the Schaffman Juge deflagration wave. We have zero less than m not minus less than one you see so these are the limits that we are talking about therefore this is how it is going to pan and what that means is the m not is not really going to overlap between these two okay so this is going to go only up to one that is going to go only above one okay so that means a detonation wave travels at uh, propagates at supersonic speeds and a deflagration wave propagates at subsonic speeds well let us let, let, not just then jump to that conclusion yet there is just one more step that we have already talked about the reason why 
uh, and then I want to bring that in to generalize this uh, quite well. The reason why we were actually looking at m not uh, plus or minus at uh, CJ points is keep in mind the the the, the CJ detonation is the slowest of all the detonation waves and the uh, CJ deflagration is the slowest of all deflagration waves right. So if you now have a CJ wave that is supersonic uh, right that is a CJ detonation wave that is supersonic all other detonations are going to be supersonic because this is the slowest. And if a CJ deflagration wave is going to be subsonic, then all deflagrations are going to be subsonic, right? So uh, the, 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 this, this implies that, right? All detonation waves <coughs> propagate at supersonic speeds. and all deflagration waves propagate at subsonic speeds right. So that is that is exactly what we were expecting or thinking will happen we also thought about a few things. Uh, which is what happens downstream over here. So if this wave is going to travel at supersonic speeds for detonation waves and compresses the gas uh, the reactants as they now become products they are compressed um, they also decelerate. So the question is or do they decelerate down to what okay. So the answer there is they could decelerate down all the way down to subsonic conditions or they could get decelerated to supersonic conditions that are still slower than the, the uh, incoming supersonic speed. This is typically uh, what you are expecting when you are now looking for a uh, detonation wave that is not a CJ detonation. So if you now have a any detonation right. You can now have solution here and here and this is something that is going to correspond to a very high pressure and very low density sorry very high density as well very low 1 over density therefore we are expecting it to get a lot compressed and therefore lot decelerated so it can get down to subsonic speeds over here and on this side it is not going to be that much compressed therefore it is not that much decelerated so you could expect that this is not decelerated down to subsonic speeds but it is supersonic yet less than uh, slower than this, this the incoming supersonic speed and therefore we need to anticipate that at the CJ point the outgoing wave is actually going at sonic conditions right. So this is what we need to anticipate and let us see if we can if that is going to work out. So downstream Mach numbers at the CJ points right. So what we then get is we had this expression that we, uh, we, we had this expression by matching the slopes of the Rayleigh and the Hugonio curves right for either the P infinity or the 1 over rho infinity which we substituted earlier in the Hugonio curve to get the coordinates of the CJ points all right and from there we now equated plug that value in the Rayleigh to get the m dot and from there we now went to the uh, upstream Mach number but we can do something different here we have at the CJ points we have at the CJ points P infinity equal to P naught divided by gamma plus 1 minus gamma rho infinity divided by rho naught or 1 over rho infinity equal to 
1 over rho naught times gamma divided by gamma plus 1 minus p naught divided by p infinity I think this is slightly different from what, what I just said a minute ago but it is possible for you to derive this by, uh, by dividing the numerator and the denominator appropriately by, by, by let us say p, p infinity and 1 over rho infinity and so on so let us suppose that you have these what you did was you actually plugged this into the Hugonio curve expression and got the uh, quadratics and solved them to get the coordinates for the LCJ and the UCJ but if you can now go back and actually plug these in the Rayleigh line itself right so substitute either of these in the Rayleigh line equation and and note that this time we are interested in noting that m dot is not rho naught u naught because we are interested in the downstream conditions so m dot is actually rho infinity u infinity so note that m dot equals rho infinity u infinity right um, you should get right so uh, to get simply get m dot squared equals gamma p infinity rho infinity now this is not very different from uh, what we had over here you see you got uh, as, I, as I told you we could have written this as m not m infinity is equal to u infinity divided by a infinity equals u infinity divided by square root of gamma p infinity uh, rho, rho infinity and then notice that uh, plug this back in this uh, here and then you can get m square m dot m dot square divided by gamma p infinity rho infinity if you got that and then by substituting this expression you also got this that simply means that m infinity is equal to 1 right so this is simply going to mean that m infinity plus or minus equal to 1 now in, 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 a, in a mathematical sense this is not surprising because we plugged it we plugged this expression in a Rayleigh line which is essentially linear right that is just a straight line therefore we are not expecting any quadratics right so if you do not have a quadratic then we cannot get two solutions we should get only one solution and uh, that is only one solution okay we strictly speaking should not even write a plus or minus we are not even at the stage of distinguishing between plus and minus both of them are the same so that means we are basically looking for the same answer for the downstream Mach number in either of these points right that is to say uh, the downstream Mach number at both CJ points right at both CJ points uh, is unity this implies um, the CJ detonation decelerates supersonic reactant flow to sonic product flow and CJ deflagration accelerates subsonic reactant flow to sonic product flow I am just going to abbreviate there because it is pretty obvious now if that is going to be the case so the next step that we do is to, to then say that if you got a strong detonation then strong detonation means supersonic 
reactant flow becomes subsonic product flow right Cj detonation is what we just saw supersonic reactant flow becomes sonic product flow and weak detonation becomes supersonic reactant flow all right but still supersonic product flow with m infinity less than m not okay you still have a deceleration weak deflagration means subsonic reactant flow becomes um, subsonic re reactant flow still becomes subsonic product flow with n infinity greater than m not still less than 1 right so we should strictly speaking say with 1 less than m infinity less than m not the previous case here we should say um, with um, m not less than m infinity less than 1 right what we should say Cj deflagration we saw subsonic reactant flow become sonic reactant flow sorry product flow and uh, strong deflagration subsonic product reactant flow becomes supersonic product flow which is impossible because it violates second law uh, which, we, which, which we have not explicitly considered mathematically and we, we, we will not do that just to st except to state that this is not going to be possible physically. We will stop here for the day and uh, we, will, we will try to wrap up uh, this one on, mon on uh, Monday.